So reputation driven events is um, actually, it looks at the impact that an incident has on your reputation and acts as a driver for decision-making in your security posture. So basically, not only looking at all of the technology out there and all of the statistics you get from that and all of the cyber lingo that's involved in looking at indicators of compromise from your technical firewalls and your uh, ISPs and, and that sort of thing, you're also looking at business assets, in this case, reputation. So if somebody in your organization has a high profile or your organization has a high profile in the market, a high reputation, You've, you kind of build your decision on what to do in case of an incident on the reputation act aspect of things. That's what reputation-driven defense basically does. Well, it's not rather than, it's as well. It's an augmentation to the already existing position an organization has. It, it adds to the security policy. And the reason for that is because if you look at reputation it's a it's a business asset it's something that the business understands it's something that the business can actually make decisions in when you look at it and it decision making security decision making it's often the task of it to do make that decision for the business and then sometimes the business doesn't even understand why the decision was made because it's it's done on purely technical grounds the number of viruses they've seen or the, uh, they, they've had a, a port scan or they, they've detected some IOCs or CVEs that are used, all technical items. But the business side can determine whether or not something is critical to the reputation of the, of the organization, to the way that the customer actually perceives the organization. And the main reason for introducing reputation into the equation is because it's very hard for organizations to build a good reputation and it's very easy for them to lose it. So that's why reputation should be a driver in the discussion. It should be in there together with all of the technical uh, items. I think that if you look at uh, the loss of reputation or the damage to reputation, it's a byproduct of a, of a cyber attack. There is sure there's cases where cyber criminals actually focus on damaging somebody's reputation, especially if you look at high profile people, CEOs of companies or, or VIPs, very important persons. But most of the time what happens is that a cyber criminal is just after that money or wants that data or wants to ransom that data or that company. And then what happens in the onslaught after that data breach is that people kind of look at that organization and think, well, they didn't do the right or didn't take the right steps to prevent it or didn't do the right things to mitigate it. That can be damaging to your reputation. So when you look at organizations that have a cyber attack that look at re reputational damage or the impact of, of a cyber attack on reputation and take that into the equation, what they can see is that you don't only look at fixing the technical issue, you also Think about, and you do that in advance, think about things like communication to your customers or communication to your, your market, market communication, or things like PR. You basically augment all of the technical aspects with business aspects. That's when you get a business-driven security posture. Well, it's, it's part of a defense strategy. It's, it's not something different. It should be in there together. It should augment it, as I already said. So I feel that rather than only focusing on the technical side, you also need to focus on the business side when you see a security incident happening. And what we see too often is that um, there is an incident. Everybody dives on fixing that incident and figuring out what happened on a technical level. And then everything else, kind of gets forgotten. It's it's an afterthought. Like, okay, we now fix it. Let's communicate to our customers afterwards. That's not right. It should be parallel. One team is fixing the technology side or the technical side, and one team is actually fixing the business side. That's where the reputation steps in. The good thing is that if you look at security strategies, a lot of C-level don't really understand the technical side of IT. That's why they have their security teams or their IT teams, but they do understand and are usually responsible for the reputation of the organization. So translating that security into reputation allows them to make better decisions because it's, it's not cyber lingo. It's something they understand. It's their language. 
So that really helps in that whole position that an organization is in when they need to fix something. First of all, make sure you include all relevant organizations and re all relevant departments within your organization. That means it can be supply chain, so partners that you have out there, but it can also be your own departments like HR who need to com communicate to your own personnel or PR who need to communicate to the marketing, your partners. Uh, it can be um, business strategists who have to al align the business strategy of the organization um, with something that the, the board actually can make decisions on and act on. So the one thing you do is you collaborate between all of those organizations and could collaborate between all, all those departments. There's always should be one owner. It's one person should be made responsible as the owner for the whole decision-making process. It would be preferable if he's high up in the board. But to be honest, what happens uh, is that that usually is related back to IT or the CISO. So the CISO is in an excellent position to both understand the business side of an attack and the IT side. So personally, what I see happening is that the CISO gets to control this and he gets to relate everything he gets from the business back to the board in order to get a good decision. So that's important, getting collaboration between the departments and making sure you have one business owner in place that can do it. And then the last thing what you need to do is, that's again a communication thing. You need to make sure that you shift the dialogue, which again is often technically driven, into one to encompass all of the aspects both technical and business. It needs to be about strategic alignment. It needs to be about cultural alignment. It needs to be about operational alignment. If you do those three things, strategy, culture, and operation, and you combine those in your strategy, then usually you combine the business side with the technical side. And that's what gets you reputation-driven uh, defense.